Well, executive education never sleeps, and Morrison Tumbeni is the dean at Gibbs. Have you resumed the academic year, or are you also constrained by rules, regulations, and the Department of Higher Education, Morris? Good day, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you're listening to Bruce. <laughs> Um, absolutely, we comply with the law. So to the extent that the law constrains movement, constrains business models, we continue to be constrained in that context. But we are not allowing that context and those rules and regulations to constrain our ability to deliver learning solutions to our clients and to our students. And so on the first point, have we resumed our year? Absolutely. I think our first classes began on the 4th of January. And so we have been engaging with clients and students. Um, we've been both engaging on the what we call our academic education, which is our accredited programs, as well as our degrees, as well as our corporate education, which is not as accredited or as academically inclined, both locally, as in primarily South African clients, as well as internationally. We have clients in sub-Saharan Africa, what I call the greater Africa, but also we've got clients in Europe, in the U.S. that typically would have come physically to us during this time. But because they're not able to travel, we have been able to uh, pivot to online education for them as well. Uh, Now, talk to me about the online experience, because it's generally not what university students at uh, undergrad and postgrad sign up for. They At undergrad, it's about the connections they make sometimes in the pub. For postgrads, it's about connections they make to network and to create networks for the future. And that is often heralded as the most powerful effect of executive education. It's who you meet, not necessarily what you learn. How is that affected? by this environment? I think we're all learning still, Bruce. Um, We're learning in the sense that uh, those that are leading have been leading in this field of um, digitization, digitizing your business models, have been talking about the digital revolution, the fourth industrial revolution. And very few businesses actually took it to heart in terms of what this might mean. And, and uh, universities and business schools uh, are part of those businesses that didn't really take it to heart. But came 2020, um, we all had to take it to heart and all had to take it very seriously, um, both as part of the University of Pretoria, which even pre-2020 um, had about 20% of its students being online, um, and, 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 and now all of us are online, and, and Gibbs, um, we have had to answer those questions about how do you create that engagement, that connection um, for students and for delegates. And, and, I, and I can tell you that we've learned a lot. So, for example, as we speak now, I took some time off. We are having our annual faculty seminar and, and, and so we're all online. And this evening, we're going to have Ruben, a celebrity chef, Ruben, who's going to be hosting us for an experiential way. He'll be teaching us how to cook. Um, and, and so just to give a context of how we've shifted from being face to face to being online and learning about how to create experiential learning online. Therefore, what, we, what I'm saying in short, we have found mechanism of how to learn to recreate their face-to-face experiences into the digital realm. And we're finding mechanisms uh, to, um, to create amazing experiences online. So we're learning from places like the Synthesis Schools, for example. I encourage you to go to Synthesis Schools and see the amazing work they do with young people, with children. And we're saying we can create the same kind of excitement with not so young people, maybe slightly older children, so to speak. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah you never know what happens when the camera goes off. Uh, but Boris, tell me, I mean, you've never, uh, you know, had such a wonderful opportunity and you've never had a bigger risk, uh, perhaps. Because if you're saying to me, come and sign up to Gibbs and we'll give you an online experience, I might start shopping around and saying, well, if I'm getting an online experience with Gibbs, let me go and see what Harvard's doing, or let me go and see what MIT is doing, and maybe I'll be paying a lot more, but maybe I've got a rich sugar daddy of a company who's paying for me, and they prepared for me to get a global opportunity because, hey, it's online, so it's kind of all the same, except I get a, a global qualification. In the same way, as you now can reach far more students 
outside the country too. Yeah. So there is no one size fits all to answer that question. All I can say is, in, as part of it, from a business school perspective and trying to make sense of that, is you have to be connected. So we're very privileged that we are connected both uh, in North America. We have partnerships with the like of New York Stern, with the likes of Harvard Business School. Um, I'm privileged, for example, that I teach on a program with Harvard professors, with a dean of Harvard Business School called Harvard Senior Executive Program Africa, which we co-run with them. Um, And then we also are in partnership with uh, universities and business schools in China, universities and business schools in Europe. And the idea about this connection is that you get to see and benchmark what is different about you being Gibbs as one of the leading schools, business schools in Africa, from Africa, for Africa, compared to the work that other universities are doing. I suppose you can do that if you want to have the most amazing and expensive online experience, go and study at Yale and Harvard and London School of Economics online, and you have to sell your firstborn child <laughs> <laughs> for a lot of money. Alternatively, for a fraction, and I mean like seriously, like less than 10% of what it costs you to learn in those spaces, you get a similar, if not better, quality of experience. So what differentiates us at Gibbs is when we think about online, firstly, we, we are simulating the face-to-face experience. It's synchronous. So exactly the kind of conversation that we're having here, it's as if I could be sitting next to you in studio. Mm-hmm. So we create that synchronous experience. Number one. Two, it's very deeply contextual. The problems that you solve when you are solving as a business person located in South Africa, located in the greater Africa, are very different to the problems that they solve in China. So ironically, in 2019, I took a big class of students both to Beijing and to New York and then brought them back here, our own MBA students. And they were able to see that if when you're learning with the Chinese counterparts, and versus learning with our American counterparts, we're solving different problems. So if you are concerned about African problems in Africa, actually doesn't quite make sense for you to go and sell your firstborn child, spend a lot of money and and learn about a contextual problems. But what what it does do, Morris, so what it does do though, is it enables business schools with connections to bring the world into an African context. And I think that's the great power of what COVID has forced upon institutions of higher learning. Um, That actually we have to differentiate, we have to be uh, challenged by this, so we can actually think bigger rather than panic and go all small and, and, and get scared about this. Absolutely. And so we're thinking bigger in a variety of ways. One, we're thinking bigger in terms of who is in our classroom. So we then are connecting our students with students from other partner schools. So that so the notion of a classroom becomes more fungible and, and, and more porous, if I can put it that way. Secondly, in as much as I'm teaching on a Harvard course, or I'm teaching on a Zeebs course, which Zeebs is funded by Jack Ma from Alibaba, um, and where I'm teaching at NYU course. Likewise, they're teaching in my course. So, so why bother pay for an expensive <laughs> course when I can give you access to a Harvard professor at a Gibbs rate, <laughs> right? Inside, inside Gibbs in a Gibbs digital classroom and vice versa. So what is increasingly starting to happen is the universities, when we think about competition, we think about competition differently. We don't think about competition in the traditional sense of saying, I must own everything and protect myself. We actually are sharing our knowledge and resources because we recognize that the demand for business, high quality business education, far exceeds the supply that is available, particularly for elite schools, that it's important that as an elite school, you don't become elitist you actually have to become inclusive as an elite school. So you're finding many more of our partners. We're partner, partnering with Seeb's Ghana, for example. Seeb's is now the number one business school in the world, right? The China European business school, which was founded by the Europeans and the Chinese based yeah. in Shanghai. We're partnering with them. So, so in essence, 
um, it's like you're creating this notion of there's a different notion of competition which is trying to solve global problems or trying to solve local regional problems and so forth. And you can compete for brand accolades, but you don't have to do it in a way where knowledge is constrained. You actually have to allow knowledge to flow for the better of society in the world. Morrison Tumbeni, I think we can carry on talking all day, but we can't. Morrison Tumbeni is the Dean at Gibbs. Thanks very much for joining us on Taking Stock.